Now that we have moved out of what is called as your P and L statement out there and balance sheet, no doubts on P and L statement balance sheet, right? You guys go back and uh, how many of you tried the exercises? You have tried, right? You guys would have tried. No, not tried. I know Nabiya says no. Slightly, it's all, it's very simple out there. No, no. I would suggest you try it today also. If you have some doubts on your exercise problems, next class I will address it. Next class, that is tomorrow. Tomorrow I can address it. Not in the virtual class. Tomorrow's class I can address specifically any of the exercise problems in chapter two and chapter three. What I've given out there. It will all take maximum one hour for you to do it. Fine. Now, we move to the other aspects out there. What we have actually planned. May not company A and B, you guys will do it. Try. If you have a problem, come back. I will redo it. Not a problem. If you guys have a problem, come back. But you have to tell me that you have a problem. Today, what we will do, spend time, is we will become a little typical accountants out here. We will become typical accountants and we will look at what we saw is the final statement which is presented to the public or which you will get it as managers to view and interpret and make decisions. But what goes behind the scene? What goes behind the scene is what we are going to sort of try and take a look at it. Pratishta is feeling very happy because we are getting into her territory. What typically we normally call it as what we say is journal. I am just going to guess, spend few minutes on this and the other aspect out here is what is called as ledger. Journals that their job. Journal, it's more for knowledge, not from the point of view of an examination. Don't expect any question on journal and ledger in the examination. No, I'm not talking about it. More from the point of view of you have to understand what goes behind this before for the next half an hour, we are going to spend time on that. First and foremost, if you look at journal, journal is the book of primary entry, primary entry that is the first book of the entry. Moment a transaction takes place, a transaction is entered in the form of debit and credit only in a journal. A typical ledger account book you would have seen today of course you have tally so you do not do it separately but typically if you look at the erstwhile age old accounting typically there is what is called as your, uh, your, your ledger account and you will write what is account to be debited, what is account to be credited etc. Now, let me pick up some transactions from that and let me sort of try and record it if I can. I think that transaction sheet is there with you, open it, get, get it. First transaction you read, what is the, where is the transaction sheet? You will just go back to the same thing. In this particular case, I am just going to pick up some transactions, I am not going to do all. I Let me make that very clear, I am going to just pick up few transactions out here. Let us take the first transaction itself. That is Pratik and Imran incorporated Pran company with uh, uh, each contributing about 6 lakh equity shares of 10 each on 1st of January. So normally what happens is there is a date out there that is 1st of January. Now what is happening in this particular case we saw that cash was coming in and there is a in the form of what is called as capital that is what did we do in the balance sheet we recorded cash as a uh, cash or bank balance as uh, what is called as an asset which is the created and correspondingly there is a capital which you owe at the time of what is called as your dilution or uh, uh, closing down of your company that is what we created. So what happens there is we normally in accounting we always say debit always what comes to you credit what goes out of you. What is the first and foremost aspect what we say, <coughs> debit what comes to you, credit what goes out of you. Now the second aspect we also talk about is debit the receiver, credit the giver out there. We also say debit the receiver, credit the giver out there, debit the receiver, credit the giver. We also talk about that. Now let us take the first part. Debit what comes in? What is coming into you? Cash is coming into you. Cash or bank balance. Bank account is coming into you. Bank account debited. Now debit what comes in? Credit what goes out? Is there anything going out? Nothing is going out out there. Now go to the second principle. 
Second principle says debit the receiver, credit the giver out there. Who is giving? Pran and what is called as the two partners who are basically giving the capital. Normally, what I say to capital providers, whatever is the name you can write, providers credit. Now, there will be normally two columns out here. You can enter whatever is the column, whatever is the 12L out here and then 12L out here. I can have a debit balance out here and I can have a credit balance out here in this particular case. Normally, what happens is there will be multiple columns in this particular case and that is all. And below that, you normally write what is called as a narration, <coughs> typical accountant. That is what is the purpose, why, etc. Now, this is how typically your transactions, movement, every transaction, movement that happens are basically entered. Pick up another cash transaction from this, read any, any other cash transaction out here. 5. Okay. Let us look at transaction number 5. I am jumping to transaction number 5 here. The company issued 200,000 debentures of 100 each on 1st of January and all the debentures was fully paid and subscribed. The company has issued debentures. Again, what is happening? There is cash or money that is coming in out there. That is again on the date on 1st of January. That is what is called as bank account debited to what is called as there is a Giver, right? Debit, what comes in? What is coming in? Cash has come in. I have debited. Now, debit the receiver, credit the giver. Who has given? There is a, what is called as, there is a cash that I have got it from basically the debenture holders. Debenture holders have provided the money. So, I am crediting the debenture holders. That is, debenture holders. Credit out there. Whatever is the value? What is the value? 200,000 into 100, huh? 2 crore. 2 crore out there roughly. So, what have I done? Every transaction like this, I will record it in what is called as the book of primary entry, that is what we call it as a journal. Ledger comes as the <coughs> next stage of your account preparation. When I say next stage of your account preparation, what do we do in a ledger is, I group all these accounts together. When I say I group all these accounts together, now there is one entry of the cash out here, there is another one with the cash out there. Imagine a company every minute there will be hundreds of transactions, hundreds of entries will be happening over a period of time. Every week normally or every, at every frequent intervals at a time period out there, what do you do? You consolidate all these. So, what do I do? I pick up whichever transaction where there was a bank mentioned. I group all of them together. Whichever transaction where there was capital mentioned, I group them together. Whichever transaction there was a purchase mentioned, I group them together. Whichever transaction there was a sale mentioned, I group them together. That is all what I do. And when the grouping of this together, we call it as a T account out there. How do we do it? T account, ledger account, it is called by various names out there. Now, how do we do that? Let us take that, uh, let us take an example of that. Personal account will come to that, sir. We will come to that. Every, every account, every, every, every transaction, for every transaction you will have an account. Every transaction means every item in the transaction out there. Now, let us look at it. So, what do you do when you grouping? I will say, I create what is called as a bank account. I typically create two sides of a bank account. This is normally the credit side of an account. This is a debit side of an account. In the first transaction, what has happened? Bank account was debited. By what? By because of capital. So, what happens? The bank account debited to capital, whatever is the amount out here. And of course, this also has a date. There is one more column <coughs> which will be a date column. I have not mentioned it out there. What is the second transaction? The second transaction in this particular case is bank account debited to debentures providers some 2 crores out there. So, like this everywhere there is a bank account coming in you are basically you are going to keep on adding to it. Now, there is a bank with a payment read another transaction 
transaction number 8 let us look at transaction number 8 if you look at transaction number 8 or okay transaction number 8 itself that is not a problem no problem we can take a break do not do not worry do not worry do not worry perfectly fine <coughs> Let us take the transaction number 8. When transaction number 8, what happens? There is a monthly salary being paid of 10,000 each to the two partners. Let us take salary for the, for example, salary for a period of 6 months or whatever it is. So, if you take a salary for a period of 6 months you have paid, then typically what would or every month when you take the salary, what is the typical journal entry? Debit the receiver, credit the giver. Who is receiving? Partners are receiving. So, partner salary. Is it so? Am I right? There is one more aspect out there, normally pertaining to expenditures and losses. Expenditures, losses, and incomes. When we talk about expenditure, losses, and income, we always say debit all the debit all the expenditures and losses credit all the incomes and gains, we will come to it. Now, what will you say? Normally, these are divided into three basic groups out there. Now, he said that first aspect, we talk about assets. When we talk about assets, we will say what comes in, debit what comes in, credit what goes out. We normally call it as a real account principle. Am I right? Debit what comes in, credit what goes out. We talk about personal account principle, that is what, what Mr. Srinivasan said, uh, the personal account principle, we talk about debit what the receiver credit the giver out there, debit whatever whoever is receiving the money credit whoever is giving the money. Third principle what we normally talk about is nominal account principle, that is debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains out there, debit all expenses and losses, why do you debit all expenses and losses sir? Somebody says credit is good, debit is good, etc. Simple expenditure losses, moment there is an expenditure, the money what you owe to the basic investor is basically keep on reducing out there, that is all. But that is the basic uh, uh, statement. In this particular case, what happens? The salary. In this particular case, the salary what I pay is an expenditure. Please understand. When I say debit all expenditures and losses, I will say salary account debited to where what debit what comes in, credit what goes out. Your asset is going out. So, what happens to bank account credited? That is all what is happening. Salary account, that salary is an expenditure. Salary account debited, bank account basically credited in that particular case. So, what do I do? Bank account is credited by what? By my salary. Whatever is the amount, I will just write there. Now, when I prepare a balance sheet in this particular case, in the, in the case of example what we took, what did we do? We took the bank account in the balance sheet adjusted the bank account for every transaction that we had. But a typical accountant is not going to do that. What he is going to do? As of today, what is the bank balance? Supposing I say the total salary paid is 2 lakhs. What is the bank balance as of today after the 3 transactions I have taken? 12 lakhs plus 2 crores minus whatever is the 2 lakhs. That is basically the bank balance out there. So, that will directly he will enter in the balance sheet if he is preparing a balance sheet as of today as the bank balance. Am I with you on this? Huh? Sir, moment you are issued, you moment you have issued, that we will take care of what we call it as a bank reconciliation statement. That is, your statement and bank statement can differ always because checks in transit, etc. Moment I have issued a check, it is recorded by you as that amount does not belong to you. It is gone. Not till it gets, gets transferred. No, it does not. 
because moment you write a check out there because you don't know when it is getting or no, when it is getting trouble it might for example you might send me a check post dated check is for per post dated check you will not that on the day the check becomes honorable the check can be what is called a check becomes valid i would use the word there okay post dated check is a invalid supposing i give a post dated check and by the time the check is the by the time the date appears that person pops off then the check is invalid because account will obviously be closed right so that is as good as till the day the check becomes valid it's only a piece of paper for me so till that stage you don't record but the day it becomes valid you might give me a check i may present it today i may present it 45 days later but if i present it 45 days later and money is not there still i can come and file suit against you right because you are given the check which should be valid so that is basically the principle so what we record is moment the check is issued basically that is what basically what we do what have i done out here all the bank transactions i have grouped it out here so as of today if i need to know what is the bank balance i will just look at the bank account the ledger account of bank i have the total of debits debits is money that you are receiving i have the total of credits the difference is basically the balance which should actually match with your bank account out there yes sir that is why i didn't start off with this sir Welcome to that. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. I know that. You'll all be worried that salary is credited, not debited. Yes. Yes. Companies account don't worry. Our bank tells you what bank tells you. We are worried about the bank. Come put. See, there are multiple things to worry about. You can worry about only one thing. I'll worry only about bank. Now he says, what comes in is what comes to my account. I am debiting. Whereas when money comes to bank, when money comes, money comes to the account, bank is crediting it. Why? what is it when when it comes to your account it what is it called let us look at the first four aspects for asset liability income expenditure what is it for you when money comes to your account forget about income you don't know you can it can be borrowing also right you can borrow and money can come into your account what is ah huh? ah huh, that is what i wanted when money comes to your account what it is what is it for the bank when money comes to your account what is it for the bank <laughs> bank owes you the money right as and more money you keep depositing in your account bank is becoming more and more liable to you right please understand from the bank point of view may please understand from the bank point of view what comes in debit the receiver credit the giver out there in the whole process you are not receiving the money you are giving the money to the bank when you are giving the money to the bank what is it say they follow credit the giver so what are they doing they are only crediting you please look at it from the bank's point of view don't look at it from your point of view that is why i didn't start with this i can do that for a fresher because they don't have operated a bank account i mean so much so it's okay otherwise we are so used to it so look at it see you always prepare from your point of view bank prepares their statement from their point of view more and more money in your account more and more liability for the bank more and more deposits in the account for example deposits fixed deposit asset for you very happy what is an asset for a bank is it fixed deposit or a loan loan is an asset for them fixed deposit is not an asset for them fixed deposit is a bloody liability for them right are you getting the principle so that is where you will say salary is credited salary is credited don't think about it think about from your point of view don't think from the bank point of view bank point of view bank will think i don't think there is anybody from the bank here there is one person yeah only really one person i know natesh uh, am i right mr natesh uh, So don't think from the bank point of view. As of now, in the class, Natesh will think only from his point of view, not from the bank's point of view. <laughs> so debit the receiver, credit the giver. Debit what comes in when money is coming into your account. You are in the bank is holding an account, your account. Debit the receiver. Are you receiving money from your account? No. 
what are you doing you are giving the money to your account somebody is giving the money in your account debit the credit the giver so i am crediting him understand sir no. uh. company which is giving the salary what is it for them sir for them it's an expenditure they are giving a salary here what is it expenditure they will write it as expenditure account debited to wherever they are giving if they are giving cash cash account credited now no cash it's bank bank account credited out there because money is going out of their bank account whereas for the company's bank if you look at what is it money reducing from the company's bank account it is basically a debit for them right for the company's bank there are four four entities out here company company's bank you your bank company expenditure debited bank account credited because money going out company's bank what is it say they are not worried about it is salary or not they are not worried what they are worried money getting out of your account their liability is reducing what do they do they will debit it what do you do salary i am earning ha oh, fantastic so salary it's an income debit all incomes and uh, expense income and losses and credit all uh, what do you say what is the statement principle is a debit all debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gains so what happens for you money coming in debit what comes in cash has come in bank account debited it is coming because of what because of a salary bank account debited salary account credited or income account credited your bank money is going into your account liability is increasing so what do they do with your bank your account they will credit your account out there confused i know <laughs> patiently go back think through it very simple yes you know sir sir intellectual property rights unless it, it has to be valued normally unless it is bought we don't worry about it as of now let's not worry about it so these are basically what did i what i displayed out here bank account and out here the journal part of it these are all books journal is a book of primary entry what do you do every transaction keeps happening in your organization every second there is a transaction moment every second there is a transaction you keep recording what is debit what is credit what is debit what is credit and then keep on recording that with the date and the narration at frequent intervals say about every week or depending on the size of the organization some organization will do it every month depending on the size of the organization what do you do you group this what did i do i grouped all the bank transactions here so there will be numerous items out there i can group all the sales i can group all the bank i can group all the purchases i can group all the money that i owe to the supplier i can group all the money that i sort of paid for wages i can group all the money that i paid for repairs and maintenance i can group all the money that i paid for or what is called as my transportation etc etc i mean the number of ledger accounts can run into numerous hundreds out there so each will have a separate ledger account one second shrinivas and at any point of time i need to know what is the balance i just add the debit and credit debit side and credit side i will always have the balance for example sales account sales account can never have a debit balance why because sales means what goods is going out in a sale goods cannot come in so sales account will always have a credit balance purchases purchases will always have a debit balance because purchases means what goods always coming in it can never have a credit balance am i with you on this only your cash and bank will always have a debit and credit balance out there in the process yes shrinivas sir yeah a scrap what we sell will get added to your income sales sales service income and then sales income service income and other related income other totally other income there can be four kinds of incomes out there for example an automobile company there can be a sales income there can that is selling of the vehicle second kind of income there can be selling of spares third kind of income there can be selling of what is called as dealing with services out there fourth kind of income there can be scrap sale scrap whatever generated fifth kind of income i generate income based on my investments also 
So that there can be multiple kinds of incomes out there. What we talk about? Petty cash, cash is an asset. It can you can call it petty cash. It is an as of as of today. If it is not utilized, it's an asset, sir. It can be you, you, petty cash is a name. What you call it? That's all. I can call it petty cash or a macro cash or a micro cash, whatever it is. You can call it any way you want. But cash is an asset. That's all for you. Even if, the, if it's a borrowed cash, it's still an asset for you because the cash is yours. Borrowing is a liability. Yeah, well, in case of purchase return. Now he'll say, oh, okay, in case of purchase return, there'll be a credit entry. Normally, when we make purchases account, we'll make it separate. Purchase returns account, we'll make it separate. Why? Because I need to know what is the returns I'm making. If I'm making a purchases of 100 and my returns is also going to be sizable, huge, then what happens? Then I know I have to change my vendor. If I have purchase and purchase returns mixed in an account, then I will never be able to detect what is the quantum of purchase returns. Same thing happens with sales and sales returns also. So, these two accounts are different. So, a purchase returns account will always have only credit balance. It will never have a debit balance. Right? Because what am I trying to do? I need to know what is the transaction that is happening with the bank, with the salaries, with the outstandings, etc. Multiple. Yeah, not four. In this case, four. For We will have 400 different accounts out there if you typically look at it. Purchase account, purchase returns. See, each is a separate different activity. Purchase is different activity, an account for that. Salary is a different activity, a different account for that. Wages is a different activity, for a different activity you pay, wages account separate. Purchase return is a separate activity, there is a separate account for that. He said scrap account, there is a scrap, I can maintain scrap sale, there is a separate account for that. It can go on, numerous. Which one? Uh, there is a bank reconciliation statement which we do. Uh, typically, accountants do that. That, we, uh, that is not part of this course. Uh, there is always a reconciliation statement which is done, which will, which is not part of this course. But if you want me to teach you, I'll teach you. But not in the regular 14 sessions. You have to come on an extra day. I'll certainly do that. Not a problem. But bank reconciliation, because he has asked me, I'll just give you a brief of it. The day on which you issue a check, you are recording it as a expenditure out there your bank balance if i if i do this calculation and calculate the amount might be very different from what is the if i do if i get a what is called a bank statement the amount will be very different from the bank statement because many of them would not have cashed the check yet or moment i have received a check i have recorded it as a receipt out there but i have deposited it will take two days to collect so, imagine if it is a non payable at par check and if it is an outstation check, it will take 15 days to collect also. So, what happens? There is a difference between your balance and the bank balance. So, what do you do? You reconcile that. You go back and look at what are the differences. That is what we call it as bank reconciliation. One second, doctor. That is what we call it as reconciliation statement. That is a separate statement by itself. That is a separate part of it. No, check free is perfectly fine, but what happens is even if you look at uh, uh, what do you call it as any ECS payment also, there could be a time delay. There could be a time lag, whatever time lag. Supposing I make a sale, today bank is working, yeah, today it is working. I make a sale today at 5 o'clock, I have recorded it, but money credited only on Monday, tomorrow bank holiday. Today if I reconcile, there will be a difference, right? So, if you do go, somebody can say net payment, net payment you can do it, but if it is RTGS, it is valid only in the during the bank working hours. Uh, whatever. I mean, I do not do much of this, but uh, something around this. Right. So, there could be this kind of only thing is supposing without check, the time lag is reduced, but there will be difference. Moment a credit card bill comes, I will say expenditure is so much, but I have given an ECS to my bank. So, bank will debit my account only on the last day on the due date, but as of today for me it is an expenditure agreed that is that much of cash I have to keep it aside mentally. Am I with you sir? Which one? Reconciliation statement at every frequent interval the, the company will prepare sir because they need to know why, what is the difference. For example, dividend warrants. I have done a ECS of dividends sir, dividends for all my shareholders. Some guy, some guy, one of the shareholder 
has closed his account and gone. The amount, though it is ECS, it will be in limbo. It will never get credited to his account and neither is he claiming nor is he changing the account. Maybe he has popped off. That amount will always be in limbo and there will always be a difference between the bank because as far as you are concerned, ECS dividend payment, you have reduced that amount. But money has not gone out. It is still in your account out there. Suspense is very different, sir. Don't suspense. Where did you pick up the suspense word account, sir? Number, name, sir. I never used suspense account till today's class, but I want to know understand. <laughs> yeah? Sir, suspense account is something what happens is if it is really not traceable, there is a problem, you are just not able to trace it despite racking your brain and the having the best debit credit accountants. Normally, the best chartered accountants, we call them debit credit accountants because they will be perfect in finding out what is a flaw. So, despite having the best of best, I am not able to find within that stipulated time period, then I park it in a suspense account and suspense account I cannot carry it for lifelong. I will have to resolve it very soon. That is what is a suspense account. Let us not even worry about suspense account. Normally, we were taught when we were learning accounts, if the balance sheet does not balance, put the remaining in suspense account and leave it. That is what we were taught, but no, that is what learned from her. Hmm. Interest is an expenditure. Principal repayment is just reduced, reduced from your liability. That is all. Fine, you have some basic idea about your. I mean, this again, I said not from an exam point of view, but more for you to know what happens behind the scenes, right? Right? What happens behind the scene? We have clear accounts like this and then consolidate and take it to the balance sheet out there. Now, why I have not spent a lot of time on journal, ledger, etc. Reason? You are learning, not you are doing your executive MBA, not to prepare a balance sheet, not to prepare what is called as an accounting statement or a balance sheet or a PNL. A balance sheet or a PNL just pops up on your table. You should be able to look at it and not feel scared about it. You should be able to at least look at some numbers and interpret some numbers out there. So that is where we started from the balance sheet and then trickled it down to the PNL and so on and so forth. For uh, online class, what we will do is, I have given you the annual report of Maruti Udyog, if I am not wrong. We will go page by page and interpret it. So, what happens? It is a lecture mode. If you have questions, you can always put in the questions and he will be there to looking at the questions out there. So, I will be interpreting it. So, there is no teaching of numbers per se. So, it will be that. 